I was trying to think of a really funny joke to start this video off because this is kind of an intense subject, but I got nothing for you. Instead, I want you to picture this. No matter where you are right now, just imagine if Guy Fieri just burst through your door and screamed, Welcome to Flavortown. That would be both hysterical and scary as all hell. Okay, so I really appreciate you guys' is, yeah, you guys' comments on the last video I made asking for help. Um, it really, really helped me a lot. I got a suggestion from a username, uh, Ostrich Lives, which is a phenomenal username, by the way. Props to you for having like the most badass YouTube username there because ostriches are just weird and awesome. But he pretty much asked, I don't know if you have any mental health struggles or if you would be comfortable sharing them. If so, uh, but I always appreciate videos of how people deal with depression slash anxiety slash etc. I do have experience with those. I have first-hand experience with those. Um, both depression and anxiety. Um, I have both those things. Fun, right? Um, and they kind of formed who I am today in a weird way. If you have depression, I'm sure you've experienced someone going up to you and saying, um, why don't you just try not being sad? Why don't you just try not being depressed? Oh my god, you're right. What if I just tried not being depressed? What if I just tried being happy, right? You single-handedly solve depression. No, that's not how it works, all right? I'm sorry. Trust me. I wish it worked that way, but it, it, no, it doesn't. And you're... Ooh. The best way that I can think off the top of my head to describe depression is it's almost like this ghostly shadow of a being. It's like a ghostly, it's like a shadowy ghostly version of yourself, right? And it's trying to pull you under, it's trying to pull you down because it wants to just bring you down into this place where you're just isolated and you're just emotionally just dead and you're just cut off from a lot of things that you love doing and a lot of people that you love. Battling depression is sort of just fighting that ghost and kicking it away. And depression's not something that ever goes away. Anybody with depression knows that it's not something that's just like, oh, I'm cured, it's, it's gone, it's never coming back again. Like it just, it becomes this thing, this little shadowy figure sort of shrinks down and it just sits on your shoulder. And you get better at swatting it away and being like, no, get away. Um, but it's, it's something that's there. Like I said, my depression, it kind of battling it and going through that whole experience of dealing with it, um, it kind of, it makes you the person who you are. For me, it really, really, the, the, the point where it really just, I just completely crashed was in college, was in my senior year of college. Um, and that was just the point where I just collapsed. Um, I, cut myself off from all my friends. Um, things that I loved doing, I just didn't do. Um, I would spend most of my time just isolated in my room um, by myself. And, and I was living in this senior housing um, and the rooms were really, really tiny. So here I am in this tiny, tiny room, um, just really, really sad and really depressed. Um, and, and sometimes with depression, you're just so freaking sad that you can't even cry, like you're just beyond the point of crying. I was just disconnected from a lot of people. I was disconnected from my parents. I was lying to my parents. Um, I was lying to my friends. I was lying to a lot of people. Um, and I was just in my room. Um, sometimes I would drink a lot, um, which is no, <laughs> big no. Um, and it eventually just got to a point where I just completely, everything came crashing down. Um, and I was withdrawn from the university. I was put on medical leave, um, and that's when I went through therapy. Um, and that's sort of when I realized um, this is something that that I need to deal with. Um, this is something that I, I have to battle out. Um, I'm not going to let it win me over. And that's hard, doing that, by the way. Um, accepting that it is a thing that you have to deal with, that's hard, coming to terms with it. But once you do, you can... There's so many different ways that you can you can combat it. That was a, it's, it's a long process. It's not something that happens overnight. It's not like a week goes by and it's like, oh, okay, I'm good now, see you later. Uh, I don't know why I did a Canadian accent. But it's this thing that happens over time and you get better and better and better at um, managing it and combating it. Um, ultimately, um, my relationship with my parents got a lot better. My relationship with my friends got a lot better. Um, I started to enjoy the things that 
I love doing. And that's where I am today. Um, I would say, you know, years have passed since I, since everything, you know, happened that was kind of like my breaking point. And it's not good to always, it's not good to look back at things because if you look back, you're never going to move forward. But it's something that's always going to be a part of me, that whole experience going through it because that's, that's just how you, that's how I move forward by realizing this is a thing that happened to me. I got through it and I continued on. <laughs> I also have anxiety, <laughs> which um, is a fun thing because uh, that's just, the feeling of anxiety is, it's not like you're, oh my God, I'm worried about this. <laughs> like, like, I have an exam and I didn't study. Like, I'm worried, am I gonna fail? Like, it's not that, like, worried, f I don't know why I'm doing all these weird voices. It's not like this weird worry you have, it is like a deep down in the pit of your stomach, you can't even function type of just worry. It's not even a worry. I don't know why I call it a worry. It's just you, it's almost like an, again, it's another thing that leaves you completely isolated and just withdrawn and just you're stuck. Cognitive behavioral therapy was one of the best things I ever learned um, and CBT is kind of well it's cognitive so it's brain little brain games that you think to yourself to um, to control your behavior and to control to get yourself out of it um, so oftentimes with anxiety and depression you enter into these like little thinking traps where they're, they're things that, you know, you start to, you start to think about 20 different things and there's just, there's certain things that you can do to get yourself out of it. Part of what I learned in CBT was, you know, you, you concentrate on pushing your feet into the ground and you sort of lay everything out in your mind. Um, they're mind games. They're all mind games. And that works for some people and that doesn't work for other people. Um, the main point is is that there's so much at your disposal. So much. And everybody has a different experience, by the way, of anxiety and depression and all that stuff. This is just mine. I know it's hard sometimes to be honest with yourself about these types of things, but that's that's step one of, of beating it. Um, steps two, three, four, whatever are talking to your friends, talking to your family, um, seeking help. That is the biggest thing. And it's also something that you shouldn't feel ashamed of. I know that it seems like it seems like we're getting better just overall as society of being a little bit more accepting of mental health stuff. Oh my god, it's so PC, bro. I, it's, but it's true though. It's important to be accepting of those things because you don't know what someone's battles are. You don't know what that person who's checking out your items at the, the grocery store, you don't know what they're battling. And a lot of depression and anxiety, it typically happens in people who outwardly seem the most happy. Um, whenever I would go out in, in public and go with friends when I was, you know, really, really dealing with depression, um, I would joke. I would, you know, I just put on this facade. Um, it's, it's just vanity that's covering this really dark, sad, just self. Um, so you never know what people are going through. And... I know, it's like, it's being sensitive, like, what do I want to be sensitive, like, it's so PC, but like, come on, do you really want to go through life and be a dick to people? <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked here, but <laughs> that just baffles me. But if you know someone who's struggling from depression or anxiety, if you're, if you yourself are, talk to someone. I know you have probably heard that over and over again, and I know you've probably seen thousands of videos by YouTubers talking about mental health, but it's really important to talk about. It's really important that people know other people have shared in that experience. It might not be the exact same experience, but other people have shared in it, and they're there for you. So, thank you, Ostrich Lives. Is it Ostrich Lives or Ostrich live Lives, by the way? Um, thanks for that suggestion. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that helps someone out there. Um, I hope you were kind of entertained. This video is really long. I will end it here. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Leave a like if you like this video. Um, you don't have to like it. If you thought that I was really annoying, you can dislike it. It's okay. It's fine. Um, and I will see you guys later. It's that time of year where a friend of a friend gets either like a stomach bug or a fever or a cold and then passes it on to your friend who then in turn passes it on to you and then you get sick. It's just like the circle of life. 
a disgusting, germ-filled circle of life.